What's going on? You listen to The Engine on YouTube. We got a very special episode for you today. We got Tino Malnati of the Northwestern Wildcats and former New Trier basketball player, Johnny Fogel, Nick Freeman, and Nick Falk here. Uh, Nick Freeman, give him a proper introduction. Yeah, first off, we hope everyone's feeling good and enjoying the quarantine. Uh, today, we have the privilege to interview Tino Malnati. Tino is a basketball player who plays at Northwestern University. He's a redshirt junior who's played under head coach Chris Collins his whole career. Also, Tino was a star at Nutria High School, which is the high school we attend. Um, we're very grateful that Tino took the time out of his day to speak with us and super excited to talk about basketball. So starting out just casually, uh, how's your quarantine been? Have you been playing basketball recently? Uh, quarantine, you know, been hanging out in the basement a lot, playing a lot of video games, watching a lot of TV. Nothing too exciting, but uh, no, I, I haven't been able to play any basketball just because all the gyms are shut down obviously, for safety reasons, so just kind of mm-hmm. stuck in the basement. Do you play any 2K? Uh, right now, I'm in a Madden league, so playing a lot of Madden. I haven't played 2K in a little bit more. Yeah. More focused on Madden. I'm What's your go-to team on Madden? What's your go-to team on Madden? Uh, well, I'm a big Bears fan, so I love playing with the Bears, but in this Madden league, we have a fantasy draft, so it just kind of kind of yeah. random. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. Um, okay, so Tino's father has been involved in basketball his whole life. He was assistant assistant coach at the University of Loyola Chicago, and recently and recently got the head coach job at Fenwick High School. How was growing up in a basketball family affected your life? Yeah. Um, well, it's been. Yeah, I've always been in gym because before that, my dad was the head coach at New Cheer for about thirteen years. Um, oh, wow. So growing up, I was always in a gym, always around New Trier. So growing up, like being a uh, varsity player, a New Trier, that was like almost a dream, um, just because that's what I always looked up to. Uh, but yeah, I always been around the game, always fell in love with the game at an early age. Um, yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's cool to have a coach father. Yeah, but when he was yeah. at Little Chicago, the team they were they were pretty bad. It was head coach Porter Mosier's first couple years, so they were just rebuilding. So it wasn't able to see any of those Final Fours or any of that fun stuff. Uh, that's that's yeah. tough. Yeah. Porter Moser is a good guy. We actually, Nick and I met him one time. Yeah. At yeah, Andrew Shearer sure is just, yeah. Really I got um, the coach. So luckily, Tino still has another year of eligibility to play college basketball. Do you have any plans for after college and how have basketball affected these plans? Yeah, so my freshman year, or heading into college, I was either going to go to a prep school because I was underdeveloped. I was a tall, skinny kid. Um, and I would just get muscles whenever I played. I was too small. So I was going to plan on going to a prep year, uh, trying to get my body, get bigger, get stronger, and then get recruited. However, I had the option of going to Northwestern. I'd, I'd walk onto the team, and I'd also be able to redshirt. So I said, you know what? Like, I can go to Northwestern and get a great education. I still get that year back at eligibility. Um, and then wound up going there. Uh, went to the NCAA tournament our first year. It's unbelievable on a great team. Um, so you, and then just finished up about to graduate. Well, hopefully I'll be able to graduate depending on this quarantine situation, um, and how the classes go. But with my next year eligibility, I kind of want to, I still want to play because it's still that love for the game. I haven't been on the court in four years. Um, so I'm gonna try to go to a smaller school and just see what I can do and try to compete for a championship. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So you just kind of elaborate on that, but can you go into more detail, like why you chose Northwestern as a college? Yeah, Any so, specific reasons? Um, well, it was actually the only school I applied to because I was so set on going to a prep school. Oh, and, wow. Um, my dad, he coached with one of the assistants at Northwestern, Armand Gates, was there a couple of years ago at Loyola. So they worked together and just they started talking, started asking about walk ons. Like, yeah, we'd love to have Tino. And it just kind of happened, which I'm very grateful for and fortunate about. That's cool. Do you know if you're going to use this basketball? experience as a uh, profession when you're older or um I've, I've always wanted to be a coach so i could i def like i want to be a coach so um obviously it'll be a big part of my life i'm a coach um but i don't know about i don't think i'm going to the nba i think those yeah. days are gone but uh but yeah I'll, I'll stay involved with the game in some capacity yeah nice that's pretty cool um so coach chris collins is obviously an inspiration or a uh, Heather Gardy coach in basketball. He was an amazing player at Duke and recently got the job with Northwestern as you were there. Uh, what's it been like to play under such an influential coach? 
Sorry, Gary. Yeah, well, he comes from, he was a great player back in the day. So, like, he thinks like a player. He tries to put himself in the player's shoes. It helps a lot because, obviously, I'm sure you guys have been on teams. Sometimes coaches, like, they don't reason with the players. They don't, like, they don't know what it's like. But he's been there. He's been through the process, won a national title. So, he, like, he really understands that player's mindset. And um, he also, like, as a head coach, his basketball mind is brilliant. He's a brilliant guy. Uh, so just learning, like, the reads you got to make offensively or the reads you make defensively, I've really learned a lot over the past four years. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He's obviously a big-time coach. Yeah, that's a great trait. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, coach so... Under coach K, the most highly regarded coach probably yeah. in the world. For yeah. For 20 years. Yeah, um, that's so definitely good to have. About. Yeah. Okay, so um, that you mentioned the 2017 March Madness tournament. That was an incredible season for North, Northwestern. Uh, what was it like being on a celebrated on that celebrated team, and what was the March Madness atmosphere like for you? Well, looking back on it, I didn't really appreciate it for what it is. Like it was like the most memorable time of my life. But as a freshman, you don't really understand what's going on. And your first experience is, like, the best experience in program history. Like, it's not going to get much better. But in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, it's only going to go up from here. Um, so I wish I was able to enjoy it a little bit more and just kind of realize what was going on um, just a little bit more. But obviously, the past few years, the struggles, you just kind of hold on to that memory and really appreciate it for what it is. But it was really cool because so many alumni, so many old players, um, fans followed us to Salt Lake City to just support us because it was, like, their – it was their dream for us to go to the uh, the tournament, so they wanted to be a part of it. So it was really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, that seems like an amazing experience. Uh, there are lots of great college players, obviously, in the Big Ten. Do you have any experiences with other stars that have really stood out? Um, I mean, I've witnessed them. Like Cassius Winston made an incredible layup against us to beat us. Uh, I remember my freshman oh. year. Um, Mellow Trimbo from Maryland. Maryland, Maryland. yeah. He played us at home at Welsh Shrine, and he scored like 30 and made a layup where he got hit in the face, couldn't see the rim, and spun it off the top of the glass. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember that. I'm trying to think of – when we played Miles Bridges, he, did, he didn't have a great game. Um, Jaron Jackson didn't have a great game. A couple of those pros from Michigan State. Uh, but, yeah, my, my best experience, Anthony Conlon from Maryland, I got subbed in towards the end of the game at Maryland. We were losing by, like, 15. And he had to be isolated late clock. And I was guarding him. He wanted to pull him <laughs> three, and I wanted to block him. So that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's, That's really awesome. Cool. Yeah. I can hold on, hold on to that one for a while. Yeah. Actually, when we were doing our research beforehand, on, your, on, like, one of your stat sheets, it says uh, block, big block at the end of the game against Maryland. Yep. And then Anthony Cohen, all Big Ten, yeah. first team, NBA Great player. Great player. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, does, hopefully it goes to work in the NBA, and I can say I blocked him. <laughs> yeah. Johnny, you got anything? Oh, um, when you were at Nutria, what do you say is like? What do you say was your best moment at Nutria? Because I feel like, because you, you know, you, like you said, you haven't gotten like that many minutes at Northwestern. What was the, mm-hmm. what was the peak of your enjoyment, the best moment in Nutria basketball? Oh, um, best moment. Well, well, I think, like, whenever you play Evanston, that's pretty cool. Like, the fans, it's a packed house. The energy's through the roof. Um, that's probably the most my most memorable moment. I wish I had those games back because I never played that well. Uh, but it, it's a lot of fun. When the game's on TV, students c- finally come to games. It's packed. Um, Sold-out gyms. And it's just a lot of fun. The rivalry is really fun. Were you on that team when they played uh, Jabari Park? Jabari Park no, 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 no. Just was, my junior and senior year. Okay. Yeah, because that was a pretty cool nutrient moment. Yeah, uh, so you said we wanted... Yeah, too bad I wasn't on that team, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said you wanted to get into coaching. Do mm-hmm. you have any idea how you're going to start with that? Will it be, like, college graduate assistant or go high school? Oh, uh, I have no idea. I'm supposed to... Uh, well, depending on, obviously, how this uh, virus and stuff works, turns out. I was supposed to help coach an AAU team, like a sophomore nutrient nutri- team this uh spring but who knows how, how that'll work out so um but into the career path i don't really know i have a lot of connections through new Trier, or through northwestern just through chris collins and their staff they'll help me out any way possible um 
but yeah, maybe GA or graduate assistant, like you mentioned, or maybe just, I don't know, trying to work high school teams. Not, not too sure, but I got time. I got time. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Have you coached before? Um, but not nothing besides camps. Yeah. Okay. But no, I've never really coached a team. I haven't, I haven't had the time to do any of that. Just being I, so consumed with uh, Northwestern. Yeah, yeah. How have you liked Northwestern in general? Like the student life and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, like freshman year, it was pretty cool because like North New York Northwestern is not known for being a basketball school or like a sports school. But when they were going to the NCAA tournament, like, you are getting national recognition. So people on campus kind of knew who you were. Obviously, the last couple of years, it's kind of gone down. But, like, it was pretty cool if you think you're a hot shot when you would step on campus <laughs> right now. <laughs> For sure. Would you say it's hard being a student athlete? Like, take us through a day of being a student athlete. Oh, it goes on. Uh, so a day. Do you want, like, in season or out of season? In season. Well, I'll, I'll preseason. Or, or do probably. both. Or do both. Pre- or do both. Okay, so uh, when you get when you get back in the fall, we had lifts at seven thirty in the morning. So you're waking up a little before seven. You had that lift at seven thirty. Um, have breakfast at nine, and then you have classes anywhere between like ten to one ish, and practice at one thirty. And practice goes from like one thirty to four thirty. Um, then you got to do your, all your homework and studies, maybe even have night class on top of that. Mm-hmm. So it's really difficult, and especially in the preseason, you got to get the practice early. You get the practice like an hour before to get your body ready, to uh, get your ankles taped, and then just to be on the court because you want to be ready to go when practice starts. And then afterwards, it's three hours in the court, so you're pretty exhausted. So you just kind of sit in your locker for a good 10, 20 minutes just contemplating, man, what did I just do? Because like, you're exhausted. Um, so yeah, so I typically would just – Wind, uh, wind up going back to my apartment and just lay face down on my bed for like another hour just because I'm so exhausted. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's pretty tough. And then when you get into the season, you have uh, lifts aren't in the morning anymore, but you have to have, find time to lift before or after practice. And then you get to travel on top of that. Um, so it affects your sleep schedule. It's hard to get your studies done because you got to do homework on the bus, on the plane. Um, not a lot of time to socialize, but the rewards can be pretty great when you're winning games, you're having fun with your teammates, but it's a special bond that you guys share. Has the grind been worth it? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And obviously now this is an absolutely crazy case, which is happening with coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Have you been in touch with your teammates or coaches about how the season went? Um, yeah, you know, our team, we have a group chat. So I, I'm sure you guys have a bunch of buddies in group chats, and you guys are bored, so you're sending like, memes or stuff. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Yeah. You're on your phone all day. There's nothing to do. But yeah, we talk, play video games together. Um, but yeah, obviously, I wish it could be a little better. The circumstances with the virus and all going on. But we pretty much like we'll we take a couple weeks to process the season, process what's going on, get your body right, and then start heading into the next year. Um, when we get back for classes, typically in the spring. Uh, so yeah, just kind of focus on what we need to do to get better for the next year in the spring. Nice. Yeah. I think is that all the questions we got? I, I think, I think that's good. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Good. Thank you. It was, it was great help. Awesome. I got nothing else to do. I mean, glad <laughs> to have you on the show. Glad to have you on the show anytime. Once sports start up again to like get some more analysis on the show, of course. Just let, yeah. Yeah. Know, let you know. Feel absolutely. Free. Absolutely. Free. Good luck guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you too. Man. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Am I gonna log off? Am I, or are you guys gonna? Yeah, we got it. Uh, yeah, we got yeah. it. Yeah, awesome. don't worry about it. All right, All right, thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah.